All right, everyone. So, yes. YouTube.com slash Instructor Victor C. And that's my channel. Instructor Victor C. All right, so last week what we did was we uh, started to work with HTML. And remember, on the last day of the class, halfway through, what we did was we. Um, we um, started to work with jQuery Mobile, and we went over to Wikipedia uh, to get that uh, to get the uh, the introduction to what there was. But today, what we're going to do is start off with let's do this. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. So jQueryMobile.com, this is the information straight from the horse's mouth. This is the team that creates uh, the, uh, the jQuery mobile uh, software, so to speak, the framework. This is where we would go in to find the um, instructions about how it all works. Let's take a look here. The point of this is remember that we were looking at icons. We had data role equals icon mail. And it made a little email icon. We had data icon equals um, home. And we had a little home button. Well, this is where it'll explain all the possible icons we have built in. So if you're not an artist, jQuery Mobile has a bunch of icons built in. Let's look at it here. If you go to demos, this will show you live demos of all of the widgets that make up jQuery Mobile and the code. Um, we're currently on jQuery Mobile 1.4.3. You can look at older versions of the code, but you want to you want to go here um, and select the jQuery Mobile 1.4.3 demo. On the left side are the different. Um, all the different sections, but the one I want to concentrate at the moment is if you scroll down, you're going to see, if you scroll down to a section of CSS framework, you'll see icons on the right side. Click on that. That'll give you a list of all, I think it's 40 or maybe 50 different icons, and what the code is to make it work. So we'll go to icons. Here we go. So it's basically, and again, when we write the code, it'll it'll come back to you. It's going to be data dash icon equals action. And you get that little action icon, like you're going to I don't know send data from one screen to another. Uh, if you need an icon for like some sort of warning or problem, there's an alert. You've got different arrows, etc. You've got a speaker icon, which is audio. So some of these common things, a little calendar. Let's say you're making a calendar app that saves uh, your, your user's data. You've got a calendar icon built in. And then there's instructions, and we'll do it ourselves a little later. If you go past the built-in icons, there's a spot in here how to make your own icon. There's no skull icon. You'll be able to do your own. And you'll always have the option of view source. So it'll show you, and instructions, how it works. This is going to work in a different way with my icon. You need to design your own icon, and we'll do it together. But I'm saying that all of the, all of the um, code, all of the examples, all the possibilities of what we can do with jQuery Mobile are on this site. So if you're a bit more advanced, like I said, I, I, I try to balance all levels of, of skill in, the, in this class, in most of my classes. If you're a little bit more advanced, start reading on this site and get to the things that uh, we'll eventually get to. Uh, here's where you can learn about everything. But um, what we're going to do, uh, what we did last time was we, we wrote some code manually. Remember, I made, I made us do it the hard way. We, we wrote every line of code and we saw that one misspelling would mess everything up. So what we're going to do instead is use some tools that will help us uh, get this done a lot faster. So any questions on this site at the moment? 
All right, so this is what I want to do. Uh, let's go to this other website. This one is codica.com, C-O-D-A-Q-I, codica, C-O-D-I-Q-A, codica.com. jQuery Mobile is one of many frameworks that will allow us to create mobile-friendly websites. There's Sencha Touch. There's one from Adobe. There's a bunch of them. Every solution has its pros and cons. Uh, if one works for you, if you've heard of one and used one before, continue to use it. In this class, I'm going to concentrate on jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is becoming the industry standard framework for uh, designing mobile-friendly websites and uh, apps. Um, so much so that companies are, are, are creating products that will help you create a jQuery mobile project a lot faster, like in a traditional sort of editor like Dreamweaver or InDesign or that sort of thing. Last time what we did was we wrote it all by hand. So here, this particular tool, Kodika, Notice the screenshot here. It shows a person uh, designing an interface and dragging and dropping a YouTube video. And of course, then it'll write the code for you. And then we will, of course, be able to edit the code. And then we will see the results on a mobile device, cross-platform, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Fire Phone, etc. So it goes on to say that all of these companies use it, Forbes, uh, jQuery Mobile themselves, Wall Street Journal, etc. It shows you a hundred thousand businesses have used it, a little preview of what it's like, drag and drop interface. You can of course pull back the curtain and edit the code yourself. Um, build once, run everywhere, so design it once, use it on all tablets, mobile devices, etc. Because it's built on top of jQuery Mobile. But this takes the effort out of the writing, out of the coding. But if we want to do coding, we can easily get into the code. So how much does this great product cost? Unfortunately, it's not free. They are selling it. Um, you know, we've got to keep all of those fit, uh, hipsters fed, so uh, we need to pay for the product. Let's take a quick look at pricing. If you scroll down... There's a couple of platforms that you can get it actually for desktop or for web. Uh, if I'm going to look at web first because if you go to web, you will be able to create a team and have people log into the account and edit the project from any computer. You're not downloading any software. You're going to use Kodika on the website. It costs sixteen dollars monthly, billed annually. So it's what is that? A hundred and six. I don't know, close to $200 a year. It's a little pricey, isn't it, per year? And what happens is you can have three active projects on the individual account with one user login and one gigabyte of storage. The next level up is twice the price, but with 10 active projects, five users, five gigabytes, and goes on to the enterprise where I take it as if you have to ask, you won't be able to afford it. <laughs> So we have a few options, of course. So we can uh, write the code ourselves, and that's free. Or we can use a tool that helps us do some of the hard work, but it's not free. And there's many solutions out there that also do this. This is just one of them. You can do research and find other solutions. This is not going to be required for you to, to buy in this class. I'm bringing it to your attention. Uh, the other option, instead of a web-based, is the desktop-based, which is one-time fee. You're not going to be paying every year. The desktop version, which is Windows and Mac, go down here, $79 one-time fee. Much more affordable than the yearly fee. It gives you the full power of Kodika on the web, but it's an app that you download for your computer. So you have to use it on your computer. And uh, if you go over to your friend's house and, and she doesn't have it, you can't use Kodika. Um, so those are the two options, the, the yearly subscription web version and the desktop version one-time fee. Uh, they help us uh, write the code in a much more efficient manner, um, and, I, and, I, and I do recommend Kodika. Question? So, uh, so 
license for the person for that computer. So if they had 10 projects and only one person would get the guarantee of the if, if, uh, if you've got 10 projects or 100 projects, you could use that one Kodika installation, but it has to be on that one computer because you've got one license for it. So other people in your team could get their own license, and then you can have Kodika on more than one computer. And that's still more affordable, you know, 80 times $260 compared to $200 a year. So... Uh, well, you use the tool either on the web or on the desktop to create the project. So we will use it, the seven-day free trial, we will use it uh, to design our interface, but it's going to be still very incomplete. We have a lot to do with it. Uh, we still have a lot to do with it. We're just going to use it as, uh, as our, our rapid prototyping tool to create an interface. Question here. So, um, as I said, uh, so, uh, the, uh, uh, for many software programs, when they come up with a new version, they want you to uh, do a buy again or have an upgrade price. Do you have any idea of how they handle things? Um, they, they went to this paid version very recently. It used to be a, a fully free version, but lower end. And now they've gone to the paid version. So maybe if we poke around somewhere in here, we'll get that answer. But I'm not sure what the what the upgrade cost would be. So we have two options. We can uh, download the pay uh, the seven day free trial uh, and then use it, or I can also show you another um, free version of this. Because notice, if we go back to the home page, try the demo. Let's go back to the home page and see what it actually works, how it actually works before we put down our money. So let's check out, try the demo. And I recommend actually, um, we'll take a moment to, to look at this because it's the demo version, it's limited to some things, uh, but it, it'll give us a good... Um, a good look at how it works and hopefully we don't crash it because all 40 of us are, are looking at it but it says this is the demo version you can play around try out all the components but this is just a taste of Kodika in the full version you can add themes upload images and media and export phone gap native projects add mobile redirection for mobile websites and a whole lot more so, okay that's fine I'll start the demo so what this will do is it'll give us a little preview of a, of a phone it'll give us uh, different pages Remember when we, last week, we started with uh, jQuery Mobile, we, we had div data role page ID home. That was our home page. Then we did div data role page ID about, and that was our about page. So here we're seeing these different screens. Home, examples, platform. Uh, I'm going to play with a new page. On the top left here, we are managing our pages, and at the top here, we've got add a new blank page, duplicate an existing page, trash a page. I'm going to add a new page. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it test1. Gives me a, a page. It actually also put the nav bar for me. Uh, but if you click on this element, Uh, you should be able to click on an element. Just a moment. You should be able to click on an element to give you options on the right side. Or you can drag pieces over. I'm going to drag a button from the left to the right. And you get options there. Question. You don't have the what? I had to refresh my screen. Sometimes this is going to be a little finicky. Try to refresh your screen, but it also might be your web browser. I'm in Google Chrome, so perhaps if you're in a different web browser. Uh, I don't know if we've got the latest version of Internet Explorer. It might be outdated, but 
try to refresh the screen or change browsers. We do have Internet Explorer 11, so it should work. Okay, good. Yeah, so just try to. Try to the internet might be slow. We're all crashing it. So uh, if you drag over one of these components and select it, you have a bunch of options. So the, the way we'll be using Codica is we'll spend today to create a basic idea of the project that we're going to work on throughout the course. Because we can write the code ourselves, sure. But if we've got a tool that will write the code for us, at least as a starting point, and then we will refine the code exactly as we want, I think that's better. And again, we will have the option to, uh, to edit our code, but we've got a limitation here. Uh, if you click on the bottom right, you've got a button way down at the bottom right that says code. If you click there, it'll give you a preview of the code that's been written. This should look familiar. We wrote some of this last time. Div data role page. There's something that we haven't looked at yet. Data control title, but ID, page 5. Div data role tab bar, icon position top, data theme A. There's buttons. So the code is there, but notice it's not the complete code. Where's the HTML doc type? Where's the meta section? Where's the head section? The, even the body tag. So it's only giving you the code inside of the body section. Now we do have at the top near the top left, a little download the project as a zip file. So that would allow us to download our our work. If we click that, oops, you're using the demo. Time to pay up. So it's showing us what we're able to do. And again, I want a video, just drag that over, put the video link right there, like one of my lectures. And there's a video in my app, in my, in my mobile site. Uh, you've got these different components. So what we'll do is, again, this is not a requirement for you to purchase. You've got the seven-day free trial. $79 is not so bad to get this tool. You can, of course, research other, uh, other of these tools. For example, uh, maybe search for Codica Alternatives. You could read up on it. jQuery Mobile UI Editor. When I was doing research for this class uh, a year and a half ago, a year and nine, nine months ago when I was setting this up and I did my research, I found Codica was one of the better ones to, to, to work with. Uh, but um, at that time, the, the Codica editor uh, was, this little demo thing was totally free and you could download your code. Well, they need to, they need to make a living, so now they've gone to the, this paid version. And when I was setting up the class um, three months ago, when I taught it last, uh, part one last time, uh, I, I, I went to the website and saw that they had changed it to the, to the paid version. So I, I tweeted to jQuery Mobile and to Codica, and I said, hey, I use your, your tool to teach a class. Is there any educational discount or whatever? And the people from, J from Codica replied to me on Twitter, and they said, well, use this link to use the... the the educational version of it. So I've got a link uh, for you that will allow us to use the jQuery, the Codica editor, and allow us to download our code. So then we can continue to work on it. I don't know how long it'll it'll be there because they want you to buy the the the, ver the full version or get the seven day trial. But let's uh, let me give you this link where you can uh, get the educational version that is fully functional and you can download your code. That's the one we want. Um, I've got this bookmark and I never remember the name of it, so I've saved it on my online bookmark uh, account, which is delicious. 
delicious.com slash vmcampos. Have, uh, have you heard of delicious.com before? If you haven't, delicious.com is a place where you can save your bookmarks. So if you're at your home computer, you find a cool bookmark, you save it, and then you come to class and you tell me, I've got a great bookmark to show you. Oops, I forgot it at home. Well, if you save your bookmarks to Delicious, you can access them from any computer. Here's my bookmarks. I save a bunch of them related to web design and technology and all of that, 400 of them. So uh, if you go to delicious.com slash vmcampos, if you went to the right place, you'll see my picture, vmcampos. You're going to scroll down and uh, you will see Kodika prototypes. It's a secret link because only seven others know about it. <laughs> this one, 164 people know about it. Uh, so, whatever the address is, you don't have to memorize it. Memorize my bookmarks instead. Go there, you'll find it there and other cool stuff. But select that Kodika prototypes. should open up in a moment after our slow connection, but the address there is slightly different than the demo one. It's kodika.com slash embed slash editor. Now, uh, here's another little caveat. Who knows when, uh, how long this will be available, right? The other one is that it is actually using a slightly older version of jQuery Mobile. The code that it will give us is actually using jQuery Mobile version 1.3 something, so the 1.3 branch. The latest version of jQuery Mobile is 1.4 branch. So we're gonna make our interface, we're gonna download our code, and then we're gonna edit the code to upgrade it to use 1.4.3. But at least we will be able to download our code. You should see a download button at the top right. If you don't see it, refresh your window, it might need to be woken up. Or if it still doesn't, you might need to go to a different web browser. So did everyone find the Kodika editor? The free version? No? Where is it? Delicious? Is that delicious? Yes, go to delicious.com slash vmcampos. And then one of the bookmarks there will be called Kodika Prototypes. All right, so this is the tool we're going to use today. Uh, we're going to start to create our interface this way and then um, build upon it. So we won't have to write the very basic HTML document like we've done the previous times. This will be our, our starting point, and then we'll add, we'll add to it. Question? So if you use, let's say, Kodika, and you create some web page and then you download the code, you then have the code. You no longer need code details exactly. for anything. That's right. So if you don't want to pay the $79, then you can use this. You download your code. <laughs> yeah. Download the code. Save it. There's no restriction to it because it's just HTML code. It's just J jQuery mobile code. It's nothing specific to Kodika. They are a tool to help you uh, design your project. All right, so actually, before, before we get down to this, we actually should do something uh, that is recommended before we do any project. So let's do this, please. Let's turn off your monitors. Let's turn off the monitor here so that we do something before the computer. So there's a little button on your monitor to turn off the monitor for a moment, please. If you're on your laptop, please refrain from touching it for a moment. What I want to do, what I want you to do is let's think about this project before we jump into the computer. We've got the tool ready, we've got uh, we've got the, the vim and vigor, we're ready to make our project. But it's not a good idea with any sort of endeavor to just get in and start doing it. We want to plan a little bit. So I'm just going to take a quick moment here to uh, sketch out very briefly what sort of project we're going to be creating. Because simply getting out a piece of paper, you can do that if you want. Get out a piece of paper and we'll do a little bit of writing. Uh, we want to create an app. And again, if you have an idea of what kind of app you're going to create, 
uh, good, you can do so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating an app for the college that shows off the classes and such. And so I, uh, I'm going to just sketch very basic concepts of what the app will be. Uh, I want to have a home screen. Uh, and we can use the example that I gave online previously. Remember vmcampus.com slash sdce. There's a home screen and then I've got three, two bu three buttons at the top, an art screen uh, and then a computer screen. So I'm going to have a link to some screen of art classes, screen of computer classes. If I go to the art screen, then I have uh, content here where I'm listing art 101, 102, 103, etc. So I've got content on that screen. If I go over to the computer's screen, I've got uh, buttons here that take me to some other screens in contrast to these that were found in that screen. These are subscreens, but there's three of them. There's a uh, for advanced, intermediate, and beginner. So these are going to link to in a, a screen of a, a, a basic, intermediate, and advanced. So separate screens. So however you want to design this. I'm just making little lines here that show this is part of this screen. These boxes are separate screens. So I'm going to have different screens that you can get to via here. Notice I can also technically go from PC to art. So I've got navigation that can take me from here to here and here to here. But I can only get to these screens from PC, not anywhere else. So some even basic stuff like this, it's a good idea to plan out. Before you get into Kodika and start dragging things in, and get two screens in and, and remember, oops, I forgot to make this link here, and now I have to go back and kind of tear up the plumbing and do it again. So simply sketching things out is very useful. We have another screen. Back on the home screen, this little info button. The only way to get to that screen is from the home screen. It's not linked from anywhere else. The about screen. About screen. And lastly, we have the directions screen, the one that gives us the turn by turn navigation. And that one also you can only reach via the about screen. This would be my, my map. So this flow chart or this wireframe helps me. plan in general the pieces of my app. This would apply to an app, a, a, a website, just about any project, just simple boxes. You can do this with post-it notes. Put them up on the wall and then rearrange them when you figure out that something doesn't work. You can do it on, on paper, on a napkin. You know, we can, uh, we can actually look up the napkin that the inventors of Twitter used to write the first ideas of Twitter. They've got it up online. You can see the napkin and it stains right there with I don't know, in Danish or something, where they were having ideas to make this thing called Twitter. Now I'll go on this side over here. So the um, that's the general idea of what's in what's in the app. But now we can talk for a moment about what does the interface actually look like. So I'm going to say I've got this tall, thin interface where at the top we've got some sort of header area. What do I have in my header section? Uh, our navigation buttons. Okay, this is a button for home. This is for the art classes. This is for the computers classes, PC classes. We've got a section down at the bottom, which simply is just copyright in our case. And then our main content area. 
when you go from screen to screen, true or false? The footer changes. False. False overall. If you go to most of the screens, you do see the footer, except when you go to about and map. So that would be actually a different screen here. On the, um, on the about screen, there's only a header. There's a little close button at the top. So this is our main interface. This is the general layout that we'll see often. The stuff in the middle will change all the time. But the header and the, and the footer won't change on most of the screens. The content in the middle will. And then we've got this one, which is a unique, uh, a unique screen. You know, uh, we can call this whatever interface uh, B. And then we've also got a, another interface because this one's also a pop-up. <coughs> interface B is going to be our pop-up screen. Remember how it pops up when you click that info button? And then interface um, C also has a header and content. This one has a back button, actually. Uh, so in general, then these are these are the interfaces that we're going to design. That's where Kodika will shine. We don't really need this for Kodika. This is a concept that we need before we use the tool. We need to plan out what are the different screens that we're going to have in our project. And then Kodika <coughs> is what we'll use to actually drag a button here and, and write code and such. So what you use is a uh, map. It's also another pop-up. The map. Let me refresh my memory. I don't believe it's another pop-up. This this is a pop-up here. But then when you click directions, it's a full screen view. We need the full screen view for as much map as possible because the pop-up is too small to hold to hold a map comfortably. We could make this a pop-up if we, we want. That'll be what happens during the, the planning stages. But in our case, we're going to have our map as another full screen interface. And it's different from interface A because it does not have a footer. So we can also say interface A. Yes? The GPS. Uh, just tell you where the school is, or does it go? Does it tell you where you are? And you know. What we'll be able to do is uh, the default behavior will be that it will have your final location built in. So we want people to come to this college, so it's built in. And then when someone ac allows their location to be accessed, it'll give them your location. So it'll go point A to point B, which is wherever you are in San Diego or the country. Point B here. Uh, and of course I'll talk about, well, we can set it up for the person to be able to create a point B, but it doesn't quite make sense for the app. By default also, if it cannot find your location, it'll just default to point A to be downtown San Diego. And then so at least it'll show some kind of map. Point B will always be, um, uh, actually not this college, the other college down in uh, National, <coughs> National City, I guess. So we'll be able to set both the point A and the point B. Yes? Uh, what's the navigation from the pop-up to the map? It's this one right here. When you're, on the, when you're on the home screen and you click the info button, that's the pop-up right there, which is just a little screen of about, about. So it's, it's navigating from the pop-up to the map. This is going to be a new window, technically a different HTML file. When we get to that, yes. Uh, just out of curiosity, is it possible to have um, multiple point Bs? Like if you say have a list of all the college campuses and they can pick if they need to go to different campuses. That would be a limitation because uh, we're going to borrow Google Maps, so we need to see what Google Maps allows us to do. I know that we can pull up a Google Map that has a bunch of pins put into it. Um, but I don't know if it's capable of giving you directions of all of them simultaneously. 
yeah, we would need to do a little bit more legwork where we have to select which college to go to, and then it will give me the map of where I want. But it wouldn't give you, I don't believe it can give you a, a simultaneous all directions at once. Like like the, like the map of uh, Terminus, everyone come here, right? Yes. But in the pop -up, you can add all the time. You could, yeah. Uh, we, we are able to... Yeah, on this about screen, we can have here which campus to select, and then it'll give us the map of the campus we've chosen. Question here. Question. Uh huh. Yes. That's right. We can edit our code so that it gives us walking directions. Right now, it's going to give us driving directions. So we can edit our code for bus directions, map directions. We can edit it so that it gives us uh, terrain by default instead of a map. Right? Gives us that by default. So whatever uh, whatever the Google Map API uh, can give us, we can uh, we can work with it. So there's one more thing here in our in our exploratory phase. When you um, go to my example site, I remember the first month of this course is to build the web version of this Android app. And then the second month is to then convert it into the actual Android app. So in this first month, we're going to end up with a mobile-friendly website written in HTML5, jQuery Mobile, etc. Notice in my example that what, what's happening is if you visit the, the example site from your, mo from, your, from your desktop or laptop, you'll get a pop-up that says, next time, visit us on your mobile device. And if you visit that same exact address on your mobile device, it will not pop up with that. It will know to go directly to the mobile version. So that's something we need to account for as well. So actually, we have to back up here. There's actually a screen before the first screen. All of this is going to exist in, um, in a folder. All of the mobile project will be in a folder called mobile. And then before it will be another another um, screen, which is this one here, that does the JavaScript detection so that you can know, are you on a mobile device or on a desktop? If you're on a desktop, show the desktop version. This example that I've got here is just proof of concept that yes, it detected I was on a desktop. It's not going to really pop up. That's going to annoy people. It's going to go directly to the desktop version. It'll be seamless. But we're going to need uh, a screen zero here with JavaScript to detect to either go to the um, uh, desktop version or into the mobile version, the mobile home page. This is the desktop. So we're going to need a screen zero. That'll come much later toward the end. But uh, this is going to detect which, which one to serve up, and then serve the appropriate one. But that's just something that we need. See, we need this step before we get into all of that coding so we can figure out what we're doing. And obviously, if we're going to create the project, if you're going to create the project that I'm going to create, you know, you can always refer back to this example so we're not lost. But when you're doing this on your own for your own great idea of an app, you want to take a moment, take out a piece of paper, write some notes, brainstorm figure it out on paper a bit, and then get into the code and the tools. Yes? Would you do this kind of JavaScript on the server side? Yes. <coughs> well, uh, no, it's going to be plain old JavaScript, so it'll be, it'll be in the HTML file, and it'll run client-side. But there's many ways to do it. We could do it server-side. We're going to do it. You know, you're always free to look at my example code and see what's going on. We'll get to it eventually. But all my example code is there. We usually refine it more as we learn more things. But um, that's the idea. So any, any other questions on what the idea is going to be? 
All right, so you're probably dying to turn your monitors back on. Go ahead. All right, so what we'll do, because we have our idea over here about our interface, we kind of have a little bit more of an idea of what of how we want to use Codica. So notice this version of it has it divided at the top either uh, show me all components or widgets, show me only stuff related to toolbars, only stuff related to forms, not forums, but forms, or all. So I have a general idea, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to drag and drop all of these components into this one screen because this one does not allow me to create page 1, page 2, page 3. Like I said, it's a slightly older version of the tool. So I'm going to drag all of the possible pieces that I may use so that when, so that when I then open it up in Notepad++, I've got the code ready so that I can use it. Um, we want to be careful about that, though, because there's no save feature here. If I start to design my interface, I drag this over here, and then I refresh my screen for some reason, I lose everything. Or if I go to another screen over here, yahoo.com, and then come back, I lose everything. There's no save here. So that's you need to be aware of that. We're going to... We're not going to go in and labor about putting all of our buttons and naming all of our buttons and putting everything here. We could lose it. We're only going to put in these general generic pieces, download the code where it's safe, and then continue to work. So follow along for a bit here, and then you can start to do it on your own. But I need a header section. Remember div, data, role, header? So you want to drag the header piece to the top here. A header. And we've got a spot where we can add, if you select the text, you've got a spot where you can change the header to say, you know, my app. Don't worry about that yet, we'll do it in, in Notepad. Uh, but drag over a header. I want a nav bar. Notice you've got the nav bar component and it works a little weird, so let me show you. I'm going to click and drag it, but be careful where you drag it because it might end up above your text or in the content area. You could put it in content, but then your navigation will be outside of the header and you'll lose valuable screen space here and there. You might instead, like I'm going to do, drag the nav bar right below header so that it's still within the black area. There we go. You've got a button. And then to add more buttons on the right side, new button. Right here, right side, add new button, and you've got three buttons. Because my, uh, my example for the class has a home screen, a, uh, an art classes screen, and a computer classes screen. Three buttons. And on the right side here, I can select various aspects of the buttons. Again, don't worry about naming these art and PC and all of that. Uh, what you could do though is select an icon just so that you've got an icon already waiting for you. Question? Okay, let me show that again. So to do the three buttons, you drag one of the nav bar pieces over and then on the right side you should see new button. So you can add a new button that way. And then you can select a button and add a, an icon. This one doesn't have the 40 to choose from. Because it's using uh, jQuery 1.3. I'm just going to put some icons there. I'll be able to put those other icons like email a little later. If you look pretty much 
most icon, uh, most elements have a bunch of options, uh, and I'll go through most of them. Uh, usually, notice uh, if you've got a button selected, you can change its text if you want. There's an option that says initial is initially active. The default is no. Well, oftentimes you can just try to see what it does if you change it. If I put initially active yes, the difference is that the button looks like it's been pressed. And that's actually good user interface design, which I'll explain why in a moment. Question? You need to make sure you've selected that component to make sure it's highlighted. And then on the right side, you'll see a bunch of options. And if you open one of these buttons, you should see a spot there that says Icon. Now, I do recommend that our first button, the Home button, we select the Is Initially Active, simply because it's going to write a little bit of code for us to make the button look like it's been pressed. And that's good user interface design. Think of the websites that you visit or the apps that you use. When you go from screen to screen, there's some clue that you are on a different screen. Think about a bad website or a bad app where you don't know what screen am I at. Did I click that button already? And you click it again and you find out I'm already in that screen. But there's no clue to it. Something as simple as this is good user interface design. There's a whole science and an art to this about letting people know. It's basically uh, the best way to not frustrate our users. I want our users to be able to go from screen to screen, to buy a product, to register for our newsletter, the easiest way possible, every step of the way. And that is a, that's a job that people have. Uh, UI designer, U, uh, UX designer, uh, information architect, they've got a bunch of names. They do a bunch of different things. But it's as simple as letting people know, when I'm on the, when I'm on the art screen, I want the art button highlighted so that I know I'm on the art screen. And that's what my example shows. I always refer to the example. If I go to the computer screen, computers is highlighted. It lets me know I'm on the computer screen. How do you do that? Well, Kodika is writing the code for us, and we'll look at what it did once we download our code. When we were designing, or when we were thinking about designing our interface, you know, we could in detail go more about. I have also, I also want at the very top here a little bit of bold header text. Header and headings are different. This is the header, and a heading will be down here, which is, in my example, every time I go to a different screen, there's some sort of text up here that also helps orient me to the screen. I've got some orientating, orienting text at the top in the header, but I can also use the space here in the heading for a bit more text. Notice as I go from screen to screen, I've got text. So what I mean about that is, let's drag over a copy of heading, a component of heading, right here. Be careful, because if I drag it and drop it right here, it looks like I'm going to put it where I think, but I'm actually still going to put it in the header. I want it right there. See the difference? That's in the header, that's in the content. I'm going to think about putting an image at some point, so drag that component over. Don't worry about filling in the details, we'll do it in Notepad. Uh, maybe we want to use a map, but we don't really want to use this map. This is only going to create a static map. This one you plug in San Diego, for example, and it'll show you a map of San Diego. But it's not draggable, it's not zoomable, it's not active. It's just a little snapshot of San Diego. So I'm not going to use this map. drag over a collapsible element. And the way that one works is in our art screen right here. This one looks great for, like, let's say, a resume. Let's say you're making a website or, a, or an app about yourself, and you've got a resume. Uh, in my case, the way we're using it here is this will show us, I'm interested in taking a photography class. So I click on that, and it pops open to show me the content, not until I decide to view it. And then I click acrylics to show me acrylics, close it, click it to close it, click it to open. 
that to design that in plain old HTML and CSS and such would be complicated. But with jQuery Mobile, um, it's basically one line of code. Codica writes it for us, and then we will we will edit it a little later. So uh, the way this works is you drag over collapsible, and then you want to add new sections on the side here. So add a few more sections. Question. Would you drag a picture. I grabbed image and dragged and dragged a little image placeholder. You might want to remember to turn off your volume, please. All right, so I'm going to add a couple new sections here. Uh, at the very top right, you've got a build and a test toggle. You may want to see what it looks like before you um, work with it, but I don't find that very useful. But build and test. Now, in my example app, we're not going to use the collapsible element until the art screen. But as I said, this version of the Kodika prototype does not have the ability to make multiple pages. So we will do that ourselves. I'm just dragging, I'm taking everything in the kitchen sink and putting it on the home screen, and then I will put it from screen to screen. Grid is a cool a little component that we can use. Just a moment. Grid is a cool little component that we can use to divide up the screen. You drag that in there, and you divide rows and columns. Let's say I want two icons side by side, four icons, etc. That's the grid. Question. Where is the section header? Again? The section header is this one right here. Heading. This header at the top, if you click on it, it should let you edit it. Oh, Two different okay. things. The last, the last component that I did was the grid. Mm -hmm. The grid gives you just an invisible little table. Not really a table, but an, ing an invisible grid where you can divide it into rows and columns and put icons next to each other. I don't think I have an example of that in the example, but Think about how we can put two pictures side by side, or three side by side, and that sort of thing. Grid. Yes? If you don't want a component, click on the component, and you should see a little red X. So you can remove any component. The little green plus will duplicate an existing component. All right. I also want um, a list view. Now when you're dragging more pieces together, when you're dragging more, more pieces onto the interface, you have to be careful so that it doesn't end up in another piece. So I want a list view here. Drag that down. But I said be careful because this will accidentally, if I'm not careful, I'm going to drop this list view into my collapsible. I don't want that. If I drag it further down, it looks like oops, too many buttons on this thing. So be careful about that. So let me do that again. So pros and cons, it's free. Con is it's <laughs> ephemeral. I did that on purpose so you can see what happens. But anyway, you want to build this interface. We're going to take a break soon. Um, and just drag a piece of all of these. You don't have to drag the form stuff just yet. We're, it's going to clutter things up a bit too much. We're not going to need it very soon. So I'm not going to put any of these form elements yet. But jQuery Mobile gives us a way to create a form very easily, like to send an email and such. But I, I won't get any of those pieces just yet.
And the cool thing about this is you can drag and drop your elements. So let me just finish here. List view was my last element. I'm going to drag it down here. At a certain point, it gets a little finicky. It's like a three, three Stooges movie, huh? Well, I can deal with it a little later. Okay, so uh, the divider, the example is uh, on the PC screen where you've got these different sections. So you've got a divider and some content, and these can be active links. Again, these screens here, we're, we're not going to create them in, in Kodika. We're, we're not going to create this pop-up screen in Kodika either. We're going to do that in Notepad. So I just want to create my uh, general interface like this. Not very pretty yet, but that's what we're going to do when we download our code. So let's say we're done at this point. Oh yes, the footer. Um, yep, drag a footer down there. Footer, okay, yeah. So header, footer, and then we'll fill in the details in a moment. Uh, I've put all my, my interface together pretty well. Uh, before something bad happens, you want to click Download HTML at the top top right. And what will happen is, uh, I think on the desktop, it will download Kodika app dash whatever dot zip. So there's your code safely there. We'll take our break and then the next step is we'll, we'll start to work with that code. But if you are a little behind, this will be a good point to, uh, to catch up. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break and when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll go to the next step. It's 7.06, we'll be back at 7.16, and we'll, we'll go from there.